Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a double fan fold apron. Start by folding your apron directly in half the best that you can, and then using a washable marker, mark out your pattern. Next, you want to pleat along this line, making that line as straight as possible. And I'd say these pleats are about three-fourths of an inch tall, maybe an inch. These aprons came from Amazon and they come in a two pack. I think you can also get them in a four pack. They take the dye very well and I will put the link for them down below in the description box. And I also have everything that I use for tie dye listed down there. So go ahead and check that out. So now that we have that line all pleated up, it's time to secure it. And for this project, I'm using kite string. You could also use rubber bands if you don't have kite string. Um, there is no rhyme or reason as to why I'm using the kite string. I just did on the other apron that I uploaded last week, so I was just kind of on a roll. Um, I do like to use rubber bands, but sometimes kite string just works easier for certain projects. So just use whatever you like best. When it comes to the apron strings, I just roll them up like a cinnamon roll. I suppose you could just scrunch them up. Um, you know, you could probably pleat them, but I have tried to pleat things like this before, like an accordion, and they just like go boing. So the cinnamon roll just seems to work out the easiest. When I'm working my way back to the beginning with the kite string, I pick up any loose tails that might be sticking out along the way. I wanna take a brief moment to say thank you to everybody that sends their love and gives support. I really appreciate it. Um, yesterday was not an easy day for me. Um, and thank you so much to all of you that have subscribed to the channel and have been loyal over the last year. You guys are amazing. I'm up to over 13,000 subscribers. And when I started this channel, I had no idea what was going to happen, if anybody would even want to watch. And it's been quite the experience. And with this last year being as difficult as it was, I, if I didn't have you guys, um, you know, I feel like you want to watch, you want me to create something, you want me to share it with you. Uh, it motivates me to keep going. So I really do appreciate you and I just want you to know that. So thank you so much for being there and with all the love and support that you send my direction. This is the color palette that we're going to be using for today's project. The last one was heavy in the pinks and the purples and this one I'm going with the blues and the greens.
sea foam is a really beautiful color, but it's one of those colors that can get lost during ice dyeing. So you wanna have a heavier hand when adding this dye to your project. It has also been my experience that Robin's Egg Blue is another one of those colors that gets lost in ice dyeing. There are many colors that do that, but we're just gonna focus on what we're doing on this project. So again, you wanna add your Robin's Egg Blue with a heavy hand. Give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. Next, add your ice and add whatever ice you're using. I happen to be using the nugget ice and I like to add enough to where I don't see any more fabric showing through. I came back and checked it after the ice melted and there were a few areas that looked like they needed a little more dye, especially within the sea foam and the robin's egg blue. There was just a little bit of white still showing through. Now I know some of you are going to ask, well, why not just flip it over? Well, the back looks like it has good saturation. It's already pretty much blue. The reason is, I have two different aprons going here in two different colorways and with all these um, clothes pins and all of that I would really run the risk of disturbing the other apron and possibly cross contaminating so it was just easier to add a light layer of dye and then pack it back on with ice and let it do its thing So now I'm going to set these aside and let the ice melt and then I'm going to let them batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. So it's been 48 hours since the ice has melted and now it's time for the rinse out. And I want you to notice how the saturation is. The top has good saturation and the back has all that really pretty blue saturation. So again, it wasn't so much about the back not being saturated as it was that I wanted to make sure that each color was very well saturated on the top. Okay, so you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then gradually increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a hot water cycle using Kirillon. And if I need to, I'll do a second hot water cycle using Kirillon. I scoop the water up in the hot water cycle and when that hot water cycle looks clear, I know I'm ready for my final wash and I do a hot water cycle using Milsoft. And Milsoft brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And then I put it in the dryer 
and I'll iron the project and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our double fan fold apron after it's been washed and dried and it's really pretty. This picture is taken laying flat out on the kitchen floor. That way you can see the arc of the pattern, but I think it looks a lot better when Bella's wearing it. So let's talk about the colors for just a minute. The darkest blue is a peacock blue and it's showing up and it looks great. I'm glad that I added the second layer of the robin's egg blue because it's there, but you can see how if I didn't do that, it sort of would have been washed away. And then I'm really quite surprised how the Cayman Isle green turned such a chartreuse color. I wasn't quite expecting that. And then right here in the center, all of that white area should have been the sea foam. But like I said, sea foam is one of those colors that just sort of disappears on the ice dye. And then I added a side by side so you could see how different the same apron can be when you use a different color palette. Both are equally beautiful. But what do you think about today's apron, the blue apron? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and then click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.